Good evening. It is such a pleasure to see so many people here tonight. My name is Tiffany Stewart Stanley and I'm the Director of External Affairs for Douglas County. And welcome to our Douglas County Black History Exhibit and Reception. This exhibit and reception is part of um, Douglas County's Arts, Culture, and Humanities Month. This month has been a collaboration between Douglas County, the Douglas County School System, the City of Douglasville, the Economic Development Authority, the Chamber, the Committee for African American History and World Perspectives, and a host of other um, organizations in Douglas County came together to celebrate the arts and culture and humanities in our community. We've had events at everything from the library to the Cultural Arts Center. We had events at um, some of our local restaurants like the Blue um, Rose Art Bistro, um, as well as um, the fourth time around Antique Shop. So we've had events all over Douglas County and this event will be the culmination of the month. Now I will introduce to you our host. One of the things that we tried to do for this month is to include our students, our high school students in, this, in these events. We had a forum on February 13th where we had the New Manchester Intonation Choir sing, as well as we had um, one of their students' art displayed, um, Mr. Justin Sa Joseph Sasser, his art was displayed. Tonight, our host will be Brandon Wilson. He is a sophomore from Lithia Springs High School. Mr. Brandon Wilson is a public speaker, FBLA president, SGA representative, C5 ambassador, and varsity golf team member. He's also a REACH scholarship recipient who attends Lithia Spring High, Springs High School. He's been awarded numerous awards and honors throughout his school career. Brandon is known for the level of excellence in which he conducts himself and the way he leads his chapter of the FBLA. He is a grandiloquent oratory style and he has inspired the lives of many and, propelled, um, and he's been propelled to speak at numerous events. When asked what he wants to be when he grows up, Brandon simply replied, I will be an inspiration to many and the epitome of black excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brandon C. Wilson. Thank you, Ms. Stuart Stanley for that mellifluent welcome. <laughs> It is an honor to be here and to um, celebrate um, black excellence at its finest and Douglas County is the epitome of black excellence and to have a, the first black um, female mayor and to have so many chain breakers to fill these positions here. Um, so at this time, I would like to call Miss Delina Brooker. Um, she will be singing the Star Spangled Banner, Miss Delina Brooker. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant. Streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star? Spangled banner yet way or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to acknowledge all of our elected officials. Would all of our elected officials or appointed officials please come forward? I just want to acknowledge everyone. All right. Um, first, we have our uh, school board member uh, and um, also a member of the Douglas County Creative Alliance who put all of this together, Mr. Devitran Caldwell. We have our chair of the Board of, the Ed of Education, as well as the exhibit curator who you see here tonight, Ms. Tracy Rickardshaw. <laughs> and of course, we have our chair, chairman of the county, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones. <laughs> we have our vice chairman, um, Mr. Kelly Robinson, and also District 2 Commissioner. Greetings. We have our District 4 Commissioner, Ann jones Guider here present with us tonight. We're fortunate to have our Mayor of Douglasville, Mayor Rochelle Robinson. We have our Coroner, um, Renee Godwin is here with us tonight. And we have our Magistrate Judge, Judge Barbara Caldwell, Caldwell is here with us tonight. And we, we are so fortunate to have one of our Georgia State Senators here with us. You'll be getting a special presentation from her later, um, Senator Dunzella James. And I would also like to acknowledge that our Commissioner, District 3 Commissioner Mike Mulcair was here as well. But I also want to also acknowledge our County Administra Administrator, Mr. Mark Teal. Um, without his direction and support, this program would not be possible, and we truly appreciate him at Douglas County. Thank you so much for being here and supporting the program. All right, and um, at that point, I will turn it back over to Brandon. <laughs> at this time, we will have our mayor, Miss Rochelle Robinson, give some remarks. Look at our future, it's in great hands. Excellent. Well, praise God, you know I'm a minister, so I have to say this is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be so very glad. I am so excited to be here, just overjoyed to see these men, these Tuskegee Airmen. Let's give them a hand, oh my goodness. Just bring, brings tears to my eyes, and I'm so excited to see all the other service people that are here, service men and women. Um, my father served in the Korean War. All of his brothers, all of my mother's brothers were either drafted or served voluntarily, and I served as well as in, in the Army. So I tell you, these Tuskegee Airmen, you all are what legends are made of, and we're so very proud to be here, to see this moment, and to see your sacrifice. You know, you are the men that movies are made about and that people dream that they can just dare to do these things, to fly, to be a bomber, to, to be pilots in Tuskegee, one of our historical black um, universities. So thank you so much for your, for your sacrifice and for your example. And when I was elected in 2015 on December 6th, it was the 60th year anniversary for when Rosa Parks sat down on the bus. And so that day during the runoff when I went in, it was a different feeling. My husband and I woke up and we were excited about that day because I had run in 2011 and, and I won the general and lost in a runoff by 88 votes. But guess what? You don't give up. You keep fighting if you know you have something to contribute. And so in 2015, when we woke up that day and we started our election and going to the polls and we went to the party that evening, I just got excited in my spirit and I said, you know what, this day, this 60th day, that Rosa Parks sat down on that bus for, to eliminate segregation and to help the civil, uh, civil um, rights movement start was the day that she sat down so that I can stand up and my girls can run. So since 1875, it hadn't been an African-American female or mayor, but God bless and the people saw fit to put me in that position. And I promise you all that I will continue to do God's will and the will of the people. Thank you so much and welcome to the city of Douglasville. All right, give Mayor Rochelle Robinson another hand. At this time, I would like to call Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones to also give some remarks. 
Good evening. And I would like to echo the mayor as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. Look at this room. Look at all this greatness here. Really appreciate you all coming out tonight on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. We are just excited that you're here. And this is a moment that we wanted to celebrate Arts, Cultures, and Humanities uh, Month. We dedicated this entire month to, for celebration in Douglas County. And we wrapped it up tonight with uh, Black History. And also, uh, we have a lot of artifacts here. And also, we have a Tuskegee Airman, I believe, has just arrived. So he'll be here in just a minute. And we're excited about that. But this is, I am the first African American to serve in this role since 1870. So that's a long time. So I am excited. And I want to yield to my colleagues. I want Vice Chairman Robinson to come up. And also, I want Commissioner Guider to come up. And then we're going to give our, uh, before they come up, I want to give our Tuskegee Airman, uh, Reverend Thomas Briscoe, a hand. Can we give him a hand? He's here. Amen. <laughs> Vice Chairman, if you would just come up. I'm just yielding some of my time to my colleagues so they could say hello. Vice Chairman. Greetings, everyone. What a wonderful evening, wonderful night. I'm going to be short on words because every now and then it's time where you should really just listen. Do you agree? There's times where we should just listen. Listen for the spirit that's in the room. Listen to what's being shared. Listen to the people that are amongst you. You never know. So again, my name is Kelly Robinson. I am the vice chairman. Uh, I have no speech. I have nothing but some simple remarks to welcome you to Douglas County, welcome you to the Board of Commissioners, welcome to the courthouse, and I welcome you. Thank you all. Thank you. Nothing prepared, but I will say I'm humble by this great turnout. Um, I am from Montgomery, Alabama. So I saw the different water fountains, and I saw the, uh, the black people sitting in the back of the bus. And I also saw the Selma March. And I remember as a, a teenager <laughs> being very confused about a lot of it because uh, I had some black friends that I played with <laughs> when I was younger because we, we lived on the poor side of town. And so uh, one street over was the black neighborhood. So uh, I'm just honored. Uh, this is a black excellence and I, I'm proud to even be here tonight. And I'm so excited I want to meet them because I did see the movie. <laughs> and thank you very much. Can we say Wakanda forever? <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call Georgia State Senator Donzella Jane, Joan, James. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, Donzella James, she will give a special presentation. Good evening. I thank you for allowing me to participate in this auspicious occasion. And I give you greetings from our Georgia General Assembly, our 154th session and we're about halfway through we have about almost five weeks left and I don't know whether we're making a lot of progress or not but we're doing something up there 10 12 14 hours a day sometime so I've been there all day long but I wouldn't have missed this for the world you see, I'm State Senator Donzella James. I'm your State Senator, and I'm very proud and honored to serve you. It's an honor also to join on this occasion because you are honoring and celebrating the arts and the culture, and especially celebrating the historic Tuskegee Airmen and all the other service men and women who have proudly served our country as the first African-American aviators in the United States Armed Forces, the Tuskegee Airmen overcame insurmountable challenges, including Jim Crow laws, 
and a racially segregated military to serve with pride and dignity, even as others who were service members were subjected to airmen and racial discrimination, these upstanding individuals were not deterred. You see, they were the trailblazers. They were strong. They stood up. They fought for their role in the armed forces, and they paved the way for so many of us, so many African Americans, so that we could do the same for them. You see, we stand on their shoulders right now, and I thank you for allowing us to stand on your shoulders. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Tuskegee Airmen, we will always and forever be grateful, for history is defined by those who break down barriers and fight against the status quo. Clearly, the Tuskegee Airmen were up to the challenge and their influence will live on generations to come. It's my hope that we continue to honor those service men and women who make the ultimate sacrifice for these United States of America. Like our commission chair woman and our mayor, both of them were service people. Let's give them a hand too. Veterans who really gave the extra mile. Thank you. We must take pride in the bravery and keep the spirit of the fight alive. We cannot rest as long as the persecution and the racism live in our country and around the world. So I thank you so much for having me. And I'm going to now do our due, due diligence, what I was invited to do. Uh, I want you to know, though, that my door is always open at that state capitol. And you can come and see me anytime. You are my constituents. I want to say God bless you and God bless the United States of America. And let's all give a salute before I give the official resolution that was passed by the state senate just a few days ago. So let's salute you. Our own forces. On behalf of Governor Deal, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, and all the members of the Georgia General Assembly that I'm honored to be a part of, and especially since this is Black History Month, the 61 members of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, the largest in the nation and the most progressive. I'd like to present Senate Resolution 757, recognizing February 2018 as Douglas County Arts, Culture, and Humanitarian Month and for other purposes. Whereas Douglas County Arts, Culture, and Humanitarian Month will showcase the arts, the history of Douglas County, Georgia. And whereas during the month of February, Douglas County will host various exhibits, receptions, and a forum on February 13th, 2018, celebrating the arts, culture, and humanities community and whereas the month is the result of a conjoined effort on behalf of Douglas County and a variety of the county's organizations ranging from the Douglas County School System to the Committee for African American History and World Perspectives and the other local organizations to promote and cre the creative economy of Douglas County, and whereas the stakeholder group known as the Douglas County Creative Economic Alliance works to leverage related opportunities for arts, culture, and the humanities so that they might be a more impactful economic force within the Douglas County community. 
And whereas the Douglas County Creative Economic Alliance will also serve as the advisory group to the Douglas County Department of External Affairs for issues regarding arts, culture, and humanities within the community. And whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that the efforts and cause of this alliance be appropriately recognized and that the creative economy of Douglas County be celebrated during the month of February. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the state of Georgia that the members of this body recognize February 2018 as Douglas County Arts, Culture, and Humanities Month. And it is hereby resolved <laughs> that the Secretary of the Senate is authorized and directed to make appropriate copies of this resolution available for dis distribution to the public and to the press. It is my honor, it is signed by our Lieutenant Governor and other leaders of the Senate, and it is my honor to present this to our leaders at this time. Give our wonderful Senator another round of applause. At this time, I would like to call Ms. Tracy Rookert Shaw, the exhibit um, curator, to give some remarks. Good evening, everyone. Are we enjoying this night? Didn't they do a wonderful job? Thank you, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones and attorney St Tiffany Stewart Stanley for doing an amazing job. Um, it was my honor to bring these items from my home. And I don't know if a lot of people know that, but um, almost a decade ago, my husband and I fell in love with the scholarship of a Harvard Law professor by the name of Annette Gordon-Reed. It was she, along with Professor Emeritus Peter Ona from the University of Virginia and Dr. Cinder Stanton from the Monticello Society, um, who were at that time becoming the leading authorities on Thomas Jefferson studies in the United States. And it was their work both respectively and collectively that reshaped my husband's and my understanding of the role of Africans in the establishment of this country and its evolution ever since. And what I learned from Professor Gordon Reed was that I didn't have to have a PhD in history to love it and to collect it and to honor it. So I am honored to be able to present all of these items tonight. As again, we brought them from our home. Um, so if you wanna see them again, you have to come see me and we can have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was my honor to do so. Um, I do want to share, um, um, I know that we were going to have um, Dr. Hilliard Ponce with us this evening, and I know he's not feeling well and was not able to attend, but can my, would my son Jabril join me up front, please? <laughs> we have a history with Tuskegee. My brother is a graduate of Tuskegee, and when he was attending, I was um, two years old, and ru running around the campus watching him. And um, my son decided when he was about nine years old, he wanted to be a pilot, he wanted to fly. So I enrolled him in a flight program out, out at Charlie Brown Airport, aviation career enrichment. And um, he went to class every weekend. And by the time he was a teenager, every Saturday he was he was already piloting and he and his friends were flying around Stone Mountain and back and forth across Atlanta. And as a mother, I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> but um, he was excited because we had our banquet and he learned that a Tuskegee Airman was going to be there. Um, Tuskegee Airmen would be there. So he had his suit. If everybody knows him, he's always suited and booted typically. He's in, yeah. 
So, but he had his suit and, and it was just a wonderful night that he got to meet those airmen. So when I learned that you all would be here tonight, I said, I want to honor that. And because I'm a collector, I went through all my typical channels trying to find an auction house who had something. But you guys are tough, I, I, tough stuff. It's either privately owned or the Tuskegee University has it. It's very difficult to get. So my son calls from Kennesaw and he says, what are you doing? And I told him, I'm looking for a signature. And he said, but you have a signature of an original airman in the house. I said, I would know if I had a signature of an original. Don't you think I would know that? And he said, mom, because he's very organized. He said, go to my room, look on my bookshelf between two photo albums, and I want you to pull it out. And I did, and it said, <laughs> it says to my friend Jabril, Hilliard Ponce Jr. <laughs> you all had such an amazing impact on him because of you. It lifted a barrier, and it, it wasn't unrealistic for him to believe that he could have a career in math and science. He graduated from Chapel Hill High School with a 4.0. He is in Phi Eta Sigma Honor Society at Kennesaw, and last year he was named by Kennesaw State University as the Lockheed Martin Academic Scholar because of the influence that you all have had on him. And as a mama, I thank you. I thank you. So it's been a pleasure to be here tonight. I hope you enjoy the exhibit. Um, I hope if you have any questions, please um, feel free to ask us about any of the items. And it's just been a joy. Love you all. Give um, Ms. Tracy Rooker Shaw another round of applause. At this time, we have Miss Delina Brooker um, sing the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with a heart. from our Tuskegee Airmen. Um, we will start with our Tuskegee Airmen, um, Reverend Thomas Bristow. And I'm just gonna give you a, a brief overview of his background and we'll let him speak to you guys about his experience as a Tuskegee Airman. Reverend Thomas Bristow enlisted in the Army Air Corps in 1946 at age 17. He received his basic training at Shepherd Air Base in Texas. After basic training, he was transferred to Shuntville Air Base in Snoopville, Illinois, where he completed training in aircraft sheet metal and as a fuel cell specialist. After graduation, he was sent to Lockbourne Air Base in Columbus, Ohio, and was assigned to the 47th 
I'm sorry, 477th anti-aircraft, which was later divided into three fighter groups. Bristow was then assigned to the 100th Fighter squ Squadron, serving under the legendary Colonel Benjamin O. Davis. He was later made a non-commissioned officer in charge of the entire sheet metal shop. Bristow was promoted to the rank of sergeant in 1949 prior to being discharged. In, 19, in October of 1950, he was called back to active duty where he was stationed in New York and transferred to Camp Stoneman in Oakland, California to await or orders for Korea. Because he had less than six months to serve, he was shipped to Mitchell Field Air Base where he was honorably discharged in 1951. Bristow was appointed deacon in 1961 and was called to the ministry in 1962. He attended Northern Baptist School of Religion in Newark, New Jersey, and he is a retired pastor since 1994. Everyone give a hand for Reverend Thomas Bristow. I'll bring this to you. Here you, go. you leave me alone. Okay. That's a pastor, you know. Truly, I want to give one, first of all, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to everyone that is presented here. Amen. And I do thank God that these 80-some years, God has allowed me to live to see, see such a great occasion that to honor, and not only the Air Force, but all our blacks that have served in our military. I think of Dora Miller uh, there uh, that was a cook on a ship and then he was called out, and then he shot down so many Jap Zero. And right now, in Newport News, Virginia, on Huntington Avenue, they have a, a center called Dora Miller Center. Uh, and not only that, but I, I thank God, I look out at each one here that today, that, that we know that we have struggled, we have all this to be recognized as citizens of these United States. And in my traveling, uh, I had the fortune to go back over to Italy, where some of our policy was buried there uh, in Italy. And, and just to be here tonight to see so many faces uh, um, and so much being a store upon all of us that serve in the military. I, I do thank God. I guess I serve under B.A. Davis Jr. But one thing, he was a soldier from top to bottom. Uh, also, I I remember that in the 477, uh, we had B-25s, and I wanted to be a tail gunner. But eventually, they taken the front and gave us fights where we broke up to the 199th and the 301st. Uh, but I do thank God for uh, this honor that we received here tonight. And as I look upon now to see these, these little young people here, I, I reminded of, of, in the Bible, where God to Israel to talk to the children, to let them know the struggle that they had came through. And don't forget your master. Don't forget our creator. And don't forget Christ that died, not for uh, human, but he died for all humanity. Yes. And, uh, and he should be honored and praised tonight. And I do thank God for, for this privilege that I'm able to look upon your faces. And it bring tears to my eyes because my son, and even my best man of my wedding, Martin Handy, was the best man of my wedding. I was married there in Lockburn by my childhood sweetheart after she graduated from high school. But I've been searching for Martin Handy. And prior to that, he was a crew chief on the B-25. And one day that he was scheduled to fly that day, but somebody took his place. And that plane blew up in midair. So when I got called back in and in, into the service by uh, President Truman, I've been searching for Martin. And I asked somebody, have you found Martin? He said, yeah. He said, Martin got killed. I said, well, he said, yeah, he got killed uh, uh, in a plane with crash. But I, I have tears in my eyes and I do this to so many y'all today. And these are the flowers that I can smell now. But don't forget your heritage. Don't forget those that, even that we was, I remember in, in 1941, uh, when Pearl Harbor was bombed, I was a young lad, and at that time, uh, all young men, uh, blind, crippled, or crazy, was brought into the service. And I remember that then came the ration 
where you only can buy so many pounds of sugar, so much meat. And every son that was in the service, you had a star put in your window to represent those that was in the service. But then when you saw someone coming up the driveway, you know that was bad news, that one of your sons had been t died and uh, been killed in action. And again, I just can't thank Douglas County and all that represented that brought this forward tonight. But let's not forget, we still have a struggle. Uh, you know, although we had the first black president of these United States, and I had the privilege to be there for his inauguration and all, and many other that I have met. I have met Charlie Perry, that even that one that the, uh, the Red Tails, I met those pilots, the, portrayed the pilots there at Charlie Perry home. And, uh, but most of all and above all, I just thank God for life. I thank God for each one that is present here now. But as I say, keep hope alive. God bless you. So at this time, we have, at this time, we have an award presentation for uh, Reverend Thomas Bristow. We have two things. We have a proclamation from the Board of Commissioners and appreciation for his service to our country and his contribution to our history. And we also have the Douglas County History Maker Award. This reward will be presented to Reverend Thomas Bristow for his contributions to American history. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So as you have heard already, we were scheduled to have two other of the original Tuskegee Airmen here with us tonight, but they are both ill in the hospital, so we will keep them in our prayers. However, we do have two of their torch bearers, and those are the gentlemen who are keeping the legacy of the uh, Tuskegee Airmen alive here to uh, accept the awards on their behalf. So um, the first thing I will do is I will give the mic to Mr. Larry Bussey, who is one of the torchbearers, and let him tell you guys a little bit about their organization. And then I will also let Mr. Smith, they'll both speak, and then we will present the awards on their behalf um, for the um, Tuskegee Airmen. Good evening. And uh, I just want to say it would be, I would be remiss if I just didn't say thank you to Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners, and also to the coroner whose idea was to actually bring the Tuskegee Airmen to the school system. I am a descendant of the Tuskegee Airmen, Ch Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bussey. And he was in that regiment of the 33rd Airborne Division during the Second World War. So I am a torchbearer, cabinet to history on of the Tuskegee Airmen. We have been in the chapter for about 42 years, and our mission is education, education, education. We have a program, we work with the school system as far as STEMs, and as science, education, technology, and aviation. And that is our mission to educate young Americans, black, white, or whatever, about the Tuskegee Airmen and also the aviation program. Everybody can't be a pilot, but you can learn how to build a plane. We uh, have a program we run during the summer where students have come in for a whole week under the STEM program, and we take them to Larkey, where they can learn how to actually build a plane, and out to Delta, where they actually get a chance to fly with the pilots in the plane. So we've been around for 42 years. We just had our 40th anniversary in 2016. <laughs> and one thing you don't want to do is give a Baptist deacon a mic. So I'm going to pass the torch over to our second vice president, W.O. Smith, and I am the first vice president for the chapter. I appreciate that. 
by the time he done something for the chapter. <laughs> now, before I say anything about myself, I like to. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a young man that's sitting right next to him. He has 50 years of dedicated service in aviation safety. And he has received the Charles Taylor Master Mechanical Award. And that's Mr. Ron Hudson. <laughs> 50 years of safety. Uh, as for myself, I uh, took the test and went in the United States Air Force when I was 16. And I went on flying status on the East Coast on the 121 radar. It was strangely enough, uh, some of the stuff that Reverend Briscoe was talking about, I kind of smiled because uh, I stepped on some of their shoulders as I went into Korea uh, at the ten age of 17. And although they thought I was 18, I lied. <laughs> uh, I told them I was 17 when I took the test and I was 16. I told them I was seven, uh, 18 on when I took the physical and I was 17. But it was uh, enjoyable. I, I, Served, uh, oh gee, I taught air defense to the Spaniards. Uh, I was electronic counter countermeasure. I ran a radar squadron as a master sergeant. I was the first sergeant. Uh, intelligence. Uh, and I always try to tell the kids to, uh, there's always something that you have that they can't take it away from you. And I always remember. When you used to go on a vacation, your parents always packed your suitcase. Make sure you had enough clothes in your suitcase. But there's one suitcase that you have that no one can take from you and keep it packed at all times. That's this right here. Get as much knowledge and put it up in that head and keep it there and be prepared for any job that comes along. And you'll always be prepared. They told me I was too dumb, but uh, I guess I was, because uh, I was flying. <laughs> you see what I mean? So you'll never forget. And I do appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. And if you ever need us to come out and talk to you, to your schools, or anything like that, if we are able, we'll be there. And I'm here to accept the award for Mr. Dr. Ponce, who's one of my favorite person. We used to go out and give speeches together. He's a little ill. But Pouncey, I make everybody know that I make sure they call him doctor. He earned it. And I appreciate that. Thank you. So if you'll, if you'll stay here, I will go ahead and present that award. So I'm going to read a little bit about Dr. Hilliard Ponce. He's, from what I've heard, he's a very fascinating man. A lot of people around here have met him. So I'm very um, just honored to present this award and this read the proclamation on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. Um, the Douglas County Proclamation uh, by the Board of Commissioners in recognition of Dr. Hilliard Warren Ponce, Jr. Whereas Hilliard Warren Ponce Jr. is a world traveler, having traveled to over 40 different countries and four continents, plus islands in Central America. He also lived in Saudi Arabia for a time. Whereas Hilliard Warren Ponce Jr. was born on February 8, 1922 in Pritchard, Alabama, he earned a PhD in organic chemistry from Syracuse University in 1958. That is, that's better. And whereas while attending the Tuskegee Institute, Dr. Pouncey met another student, Maddie May Hunter, and they were married in 1947. Hilliard and Maddie were married for 60 years and to her death in 2007. They have one son and one grandson. And whereas he is a retired from Union Carbide where he worked as a chemist for 30 years. After he retired, he lived and worked in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for six years while he served as a technical advisor to the Saudi Arabia Petrochemical Company. And whereas in 2008, Dr. Pouncey Jr. received the Congressional Gold Medal in recognition of his service with the Tuskegee Airmen during World War II. Dr. Ponce, yes, let's clap for that. Dr. Ponce also served with the New York Air National Guard and, and as a retired major in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Whereas Hilliard Warren Ponce Jr. says, my story is a simple one, and everything I did, whether for my country, my family, my people, or my maker, I did my best. 
I am convinced that that is the meaning of being a Tuskegee Airman. Therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners is proud to express its appreciation to Dr. Hilliard Warren Ponce Jr., whose service and sacrifice helped to preserve the freedom we enjoy today. So we will present this award to Mr. Smith on behalf of Mr. Ponce Jr. And we had one more original member of the Tuskegee Airmen that was supposed to be here with us tonight, but once again, he is ill. And that is Mr. Val Archer. And accepting the award on his behalf is Mr. Larry Bussey. And I'll read the proclamation. Um, so in recognition of Mr. Val Archer. Whereas at 15, at the age of 15, Val Archer attempted to enlist in the Marine Corps and the Navy, but was told to come back when he was 18. And whereas Val Archer decided to try the Army on that day, he was processed along with other men, and he passed all of his written tests and his physical exam. Um, he was processed with his birth certificate um, and returned the next morning. Let's see, two hours later, Val and his friend were in line to receive their uniforms at Fort Sheridan, Illinois. And whereas after basic training at Wichita Falls, Texas, uh, Mr. Val Archer attended technical training at Geiger Field in Spokane, Washington, and subsequently Chanute Field, Illinois. He was fortunate to be assigned to the 332nd Fighter Group, a.k.a. the Tuskegee Airmen, at Lockbourne Air Base in Columbus, Ohio. And whereas from January 1946 through September 1949, he was assigned as an airplane mechanic and later as an aircraft instrument specialist, Therefore, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners is proud to express its appreciation to Mr. Val Archer, whose service and sacrifice helped to preserve the freedom we enjoy today. What I'd like to do is recognize our other torch barriers at this time. If um, Mr. Ron Grant, would you please stand? He's actually wearing the World War II uniform. He will back Greg Grant I'm sorry during that time my bad <laughs> and also the person who always keeps me straight doing things in the chapter and that's Miss Piper Burks and also Mr. Benjamin Burton These are the individuals, and I will be remiss if I didn't mention our photographer, Mr. Stan Coleman. We are the ones that continue to carry on this history of the Tuskegee Airmen and the accomplishments that they made during that time for all of us who are here today. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to also present a proclamation to the Atlanta chapter of the Tuskegee Airmen for their service and everything that they do in the community with assisting with education and also to continue to carry the torch for the Tuskegee Airmen. So I would like to present this to you, Mr. Bussey. Thank you. All right, and let's give them a hand. Thank you guys so much. And we have one more group of, I call them fascinating women in our community. These women have been an inspiration to me. Um, they, are, they have been around Douglas County for 28 years promoting history. And a big part of the history and arts and culture that they have promoted is African American history. These ladies belong to an organization called the Douglas County Connection. They have some amazing events. I think the first event that I went to, I want to say arts event in this county that I went to, was their African American exhibit that they do at the Cultural Arts Council in January. That exhibit is what me, got me involved, and I'm now a member of the Cultural Arts Council board here in the county. 
Um, they have been such an inspiration in their, their annual Kwanzaa event that they have every year. They actually taught me the principles of Kwanzaa and I actually went and I bought my first Kwanzaa. I got everything, did the table. So they have, they have taught and been just a, such an inspiration to so many people in this community. They are part of the Douglas County Creative Economic Alliance. They participated in our forum and a lot of the other events that we have. And we are so fortunate to have these ladies in our community. They are pillars in our community. They are business women, homemakers, just wonderful, a wonderful group of women. Um, and at this time, I'd like to call up our president, the president, Darlene Kimes, and all of the members of the Douglas County Connection because we have a proclamation for them. <laughs> and I just, all of these wonderful ladies, Ms. Jen and Ms. Ruth, you guys are such an inspiration. Come on. And, um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of their history. They were founded in 1990 um, by the assistant to Mayor Charlie Kemp, Ms. Helen Catron. And their goal is to enrich the cultural experiences and arts as it relates to African American culture and history by establishing and supporting various community events each year. The organization has been a vibrant part of the Douglas County community for over 28 years. This organization brings an average of 175 attendees to all of their events. They have hosted our Kwanzaa events, our um, authors and poets events. We had that last week at the Cultural Arts Council, a magnificent event. They do that every year in February, so you should check that out. And the Douglas County Board of Commissioners just wants to express their appreciation for everything that you all, you all have done in the community. So tonight, they will, we, will, we, will, we will be presenting you with a proclamation and the Public Service and Arts Award for our community. So let's give it let you say Thank you so much, Tiffany. I'd like to thank the Board of Commissioners, the Mayor, and the and the members uh, and the citizens of Douglas County. I am so honored to be able to receive this award on behalf of the Douglas County Connection. We do a lot of great work in the neighborhood and in the community that most people don't realize. But we do have three major events a year, and there's a Kwanzaa event that we host in December. Kwanzaa, in our opinion, is just not an African-American event. It is a cultural event, and it is a universal event. And everybody learns about the principle of Kwanzaa. We all talk about the faith base. We talk about health. We talk about entrepreneurship. And those are the kind of things that we all are engaged in as an individual, as a community. So I want to say that's a major event that we have in December. And in January, we host an artist reception when the Cultural Arts Center comes around and decide to host an art exhibit. We are there to host them. If you've never attended, you should do that. It's right after Christmas. It's a very nice event, and we hope you'll come out to that. And finally, the Authors and Poets program we had just recently as last Sunday. It is an awesome event. Things that's very valuable to our children in the neighborhood as well as to you. And we would like very much for you to come out next year. Our event will be, hope, be posted in the Chapel Hill News, and it will be posted around the Douglas County area. And believe it or not, we have a lot of people that have come through us with the Authors and Poets, and we are famous for saying we take the credit for that that we had one of our authors to be able to book to become a theater play. And her, and her play sold out seven times in Atlanta. She was, she was I tell her that we gave her that prompt she need, and Douglas kind of take, a, take, um, take the, uh, the credit for her. And so where she goes, I say, you make sure Douglas kind of get credit for this because you are one of us in terms of your books and your father. And uh, Barbara Carwell's daughter, she's one of our other famous artists. Is she here with us? Is she here? She's also one of our famous artists that we have, uh, authors that we have here in Douglasville. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot going on. We're here to enrich the culture, the African-American culture in Douglas County community. We hope you will continue to come out and support us. And we want to make sure that you know that we're there and we're doing great things. Pay attention to your Douglas County happenings and you will get the information. Thank you very much. And, and if I may take one point of privilege, please. Um, the Hydrangea Festival that we have here in Douglasville, Georgia, it occurs on the first week of June. Please save the date for your commit for this community. It is a part of the art thing that goes on in Douglasville, so please make sure that you're there too. And again, I would like to thank all my members, and thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. 
And just one quick thing before I turn over the mic to Brandon. I'd like to thank the Women Impacting West Georgia um, for being our community host tonight. If they're here, raise your hands. All right. And I also want to... <laughs> I also want to thank the Committee for African American History and World Perspectives. This is their exhibit. We hope you guys take the time to enjoy it. It is a beautiful exhibit. I'd like to thank our president of the CAC, Ms. Lisa Downey, and our vice president, Ms. Gail Moore, um, for being here. They've been a big part of all of the um, arts activities. So I will turn the mic over to Brendan. Brendan. 